Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. When you come in, do me a favor. When you come in, when you come in this morning, do me a favor and share this with somebody. If you have another phone, even text them and let them know that we're on the prayer line this morning. Our mind blowing season. Type that in the comments if you can, if you're not driving. This is my mind blowing season. Here now. Tina, hey baby. Good morning. Good morning. This is our mind blowing season. Hey, sweetheart. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Listen. I do own the rights to this song. I don't have to say, oh, I don't own the rights to this song. I really do. I really do. God is more than enough. To me, he's more than enough. Yes, Lord, but that's not even the title. The title is A Mind-Blowing Season. God is about to do something bigger than we could ever imagine in this lifetime. I know it's been hard. It's been a hard place. But God said, if you praise me in that hard place, I'll make rivers in your desert. God said, if you praise me where the most pain came from, praise me right there. Charissa, good morning, sis. God said, praise me in the place that they left you for dead. Praise me in the place. Shout right in the enemy's face. When he thought it was over for you, when you thought it was over, when you wanted to give up, God said, now I'm about to give you a mind blowing season. There is no way, there is no way humanly possible that the circumstances should have turned out like they did. Sylvia, we shouldn't even be here to tell our own testimony, but God, if the enemy had it his way, we would be dead and gone a long time ago. But God, but God, if the enemy had it his way, we wouldn't even be here in the land of the living. Somebody said I'm about to have a mind-blowing season. Woo, God's about to do something so big. Madam CEO, I see you. Hey, baby. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Listen, since we about to have the best season of our lives, why? Because we've been through enough. We've suffered enough. We've suffered at the hands of the enemy only because we were doing right by God. Wait a minute. It wasn't that you were out of the will of God. It was really because you were in the will, but you're building something that will outlive you. You're building for your family and you are a threat to the enemy when you're positive, when you're building, when you're loving, when you're a giver. Somebody say, but no weapon. <laughs> this is my mind-blowing season. Even if I've had to go through some of the worst seasons of my life, but God's bringing me to my wealthy place. Ah, God's bringing me out of a famine. Who am I speaking to this morning? God is bringing you to a season where you're going to get beauty for ashes. When you think about what you've gone through would have killed somebody else. They would have stopped in the place where the pain was. Somebody say, but God, whoo, he's about to give me a mind-blowing season because I didn't give up. You didn't give up, beloved. You didn't walk away from God when people walked away from you. You stayed right there in position for your possession. You did not move. The circumstances kind of hit you, but you didn't move. Somebody say, but God, in my mind-blowing season, oh my God, today, in my mind-blowing season, I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to give God the, 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 the everything that he's worth. My, my, my worship is for real, for real. <laughs> my praise, even in the midst of my pain, because it's not according to how I feel. It just is. Woo, who am I speaking to? It's not according 
to what the circumstances in my life for God to get the glory out of my life. It just is. I don't praise him because it's a uh, comfortable position, uh, uh, situations. Uh, uh, the conditions don't determine my praise. Woo. But God, ha, huh? glory, 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 glory. I woke up this morning feeling good. I woke up this morning saying, God, what is it that you want me to tell your people? I know what my word was, but if you, if, if you have a divine interruption and you need to say something, God, have your way because get Marlo out the way, ha. Huh? God, I need you this morning. I need you this morning. We are this morning. We're in Ruth. We're in Ruth. And we're starting in Ruth at the first verse. Somebody say it don't matter how it looks. Woo! Somebody say it doesn't matter what it looks like. But God is going to be the one who gets all the glory out of my story. We're in Ruth. We're in Ruth. Ha! We're in Ruth chapter one. Listen, the spoiler alert. Let me tell you something. The spoiler alert about this story is she came out on top. <laughs> the spoiler alert in your own story, no matter what it looks like, don't give up on me in this season because I'm not doing, you know, as well as you may think I am. Don't give up on me in this season because of the conditions. Don't give up on me in this season. I'm the one you want to stay connected to. Come on, somebody, Ruth and Naomi in this story. But listen, I got a twist. Somebody say I got a plot twist because where the Ruth and Naomi, we omit Opar. Opar. Oprah, Oprah, whatever you want to call her. Now, she is very relevant in this story. And we're going to talk about her relevance in this story because you must understand in your own story who's supposed to stay and who's supposed to go. Woo! Who you supposed to cleave to and who you supposed to run from. Y'all don't hear me this morning. It is imperative in this season that we have people around us that know that they got our back. We got their back. They got our back. Come on, somebody. So we in Ruth. We in Ruth, verse 1, chapter 1, rather, verse 1. And it says in the Message Bible, once upon a time, it's reading like a story. It was back in the days when judges led Israel. But there was a famine in the land. Somebody said a famine was in the land. And a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home to live in the country of Moab. He left Bethlehem, Judah. He left to move in the country of Moab. And he and his wife and his two sons, and the man's name was Elamech. Elamech. His wife's name was Naomi. And his sons were named Malon and Chilion. And it says all the uh, Euphrates from Bethlehem in Judah. And if I mispronounce something, just roll with me anyway. Roll with me anyway. And then it said Bethlehem in Judah is where these people left. But wait for it. Wait for it. It said they all went to the country of Moab and settled there. Let me put a pause right there. The Moabites didn't even like the Israelites, the Moabites, where he went to for shelter and for cover. And because there was a famine in Bethlehem, now wait for it. You got to go in the enemy's camp for refuge. Oh my God. So you're going from bad to worse because you don't know when you get to Moab, what is going to be waiting for you. They all went to the country of Moab and settled there in a limb element died and Naomi was left. He died. But Naomi, his wife, was left. She and her two sons, wait for it. The sons then took Moabite wives. They took Moabite wives. Could have turned out to be a much worse situation. But to add insult to injury, let me go back. The name of the first was Orpah. The second was Ruth. 
the whole book of Ruth is named after her. They lived there in Moab for the next 10 years. The sons, Mahon and Chilion, these two brothers took Moabite women as their wives. For 10 years, they lived in Moab. But then the two brothers, wait for it, y'all. It doesn't even say what they died of, but it said Malon and Chilion died. So you mean to tell me we've left Bethlehem because of the famine. I get to Moab. I got a whole family. I got a husband and two sons. My husband passes away, but I still got two sons. This is very important in biblical days for women to, if the husband was gone, at least the sons could carry on the family name and still work for the family. This is very important. But it said after 10 years, when they acquired these Moabite women, they died lived there for 10 years. Now the woman was left without either. We're talking about Naomi. She was left with no husband or no sons. But it says one day she got herself together. <laughs> Y'all, that message Bible is so real. It said one day, she got herself together. I love how this reads. Somebody say, get yourself together. She got herself together, her and her two daughters-in-laws, to leave the country of Moab and set out for home. Where was home? Where was Naomi originally from? Bethlehem, Judah. She's like, I, 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 this, there's nothing left here for me. I got to go home. But unbeknownst to her, she said, I got to go home. I'm not trying to take y'all with me because y'all from Moab. She said, she said that uh, she heard that God had been pleased to visit his people in Bethlehem and give them food. And so she started out, we're talking about Naomi. Naomi started out from the place she had been living. Her and her two daughters-in-law. On the road back to the land of Judah, it said after a short while, Naomi told her two daughters-in-law, go back. That's my home, y'all home. Go back, go home, and live with your mothers, your family. And may God treat you as graciously as you have treated your deceased husbands and me. So what Naomi was saying was, your season is up. Thank you. I love you. You've been good to me. You were good to my children. But let's just kiss and say goodbye right here, right here, right now, because I'm going home to where I'm from. I hope y'all sharing this and I hope y'all tagging people because I need for y'all to hear me this morning in our mind blowing season. I need for you to understand how powerful this story is with Ruth, Naomi and Orpah. This is where we drop one of the characters. Y'all listen. She was firm. She says, go home, go home to your people. She says, go back, my dear daughters, because why would you come with me? Your season is up. You were good to me. Thank you, deuces. Do you think <laughs> that I'm going to have two more sons in my womb who can become your future husbands? So let me know why you still connected with me and I don't have anything for you. Ooh. The mere fact that she had to give her stance to her daughters-in-laws, no more husbands, three widows, a mother who lost her sons and her husband. There's nothing left for me here. Go home. 
Why would you want to be with me? I have nothing else. I don't listen. I can't conceive anymore. So what is the correlation? Why are you here? She says, why would you come with me? She says, you can go back. Both of y'all can go back, dear daughters. On your way, please get. Scram. I'm too old to get a husband. And why even if I said there's still hope? In this very night, I got a man and had sons. Can you imagine being satisfied to wait until they were grown? Naomi was giving these two beautiful women every reason to deuce, to bite, gone, scram, exit stage left. She said, can you imagine being satisfied to wait until they grown? Would you wait that long to get married again? No, daughters. This is a bitter pill for me to swallow. More bitter for me than you. I've lost more than you could ever imagine. She says, God has dealt with me a hard blow. This hurt. Never would have thought that it would have happened to me. But there's still hope for y'all. So don't be connected to me and I have nothing else to give you. This is bitter for me. More bitter for me than you. She again cried openly to these two beautiful women, her daughters-in-law. And because she gave them the option to leave, Orpah, the Bible said, kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth embraced her. She held on, but she had to let go. Do y'all understand this story like it's hitting me this morning? One of them said, you know, you're right. I am from Moab. I should be able to start over again. And in Orpah's defense, let me just say this. She knew. I'm not going to your country and I don't know what's for me. This is familiar territory. It might be a familiar famine, but I just believe that I'm going to make it. I'm going to take your advice, Naomi, and I'm going to go home to my family. But wait. But wait. Verse 15 says, Naomi said, look at your sister-in-law going back home to live with her own people and her gods. Go with her. But what about them faithfuls? Woo! The faithfuls that said, I'm not going nowhere. You got to cut me out for real. You got to get rid of me. I am attached to you. She said, Ruth said, don't force me to leave you. Don't make me go home. We in the message Bible, we in Ruth. We're starting with the first, the first chapter. She said, don't make me go home. Where you go, I go. Where you live, I live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. This is Ruth telling her mother-in-law, we've been here. I've been connected to you for 10 years. I'm not going nowhere. I'm here for the long haul. Do I have some long haul people? I want you to think people that are in your camp. Come what may, hell or high water, they are not being disconnected from you because they know if I was in a good season with you, just because you're going through, I'm not going to leave you. It looks bad right now. I don't know what's facing us, what's ahead, but I do know that you were too good to me. Big sis, too good to me for me to disconnect from you because the bottom has fallen out. Ruth said, where you go, I go. Where you live, I'll live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I'll die. And that's where I'll be buried. So help me God. See, when somebody's word is their bond, somebody say, I'm in a mind blowing season. And you say, evangelist, I thought that was good. It is, it's coming. Rosanna, come on, NRD. Listen, what do you have to get past to get to? What is it that if I can get through this season of famine, I'm going to a land of milk and honey. I know that if I can get through this with the right 
people. Come on, somebody. Because the disconnect, come on, Linda, was three. Naomi, Ruth, this is what was left. And Orpah. Orpah's already given her a right hand to be out the door. You know, I'm, I'm out. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee, while we're absent one from another, she's already given it. And let me just tell you this. Don't be mad at people when their season is up. Would you rather they go and sabotage the mission that God has you on? No. And you need to ask people, why are you still here? Are we good? What's going on? You've been a little acting funny lately. Are we straight? Do you want to keep going? I applaud Oprah, Orpah for going home. She said, yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much. I didn't really want to go, but since you said what you said, Naomi, we out. But that Ruth, somebody say, but that Ruth, that Ruth said, I ain't going nowhere. She said, where you go, I'll go. Where you're going to be buried, so help me God. Not even death itself is going to come between us. Oh my God. Does anybody have any till death do us part outside of marriage? Because I know full well, those are the vows that I gave my husband and my husband gave me. And if God is my witness, I'm in here for the long haul. This can be related to any situation of evaluations of your friendships, even your family. It's family. I don't ever want to talk to again. So help me, God, I love you. But I opted to exit out because you hurt me too bad. I love you from a distance. I will do anything for you. But sometimes pain can be a block and to thine own self be true. I'm not telling you to hate anybody. But I will tell you, give them the option like Naomi gave the option. She gave all these excuses. I have no idea why you would still want to go. One, the faithful one. My word is my bond, mama. I ain't going nowhere. And then it said, when Naomi saw that Ruth had her heart set, listen, y'all, her heart was set on going with her. She gave in. And so the two of them traveled on together to Bethlehem. I, I, I mean, I, I've read Ruth. I, I, I know this passage of scripture. But it's not until you've had to make some hard decisions. Somebody say some hard decisions in your life. Do I stay? Or do I go? Do I let you stay or do I give you the gift of goodbye? You, 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 you've got to know. You've got to know what you're dealing with in this season. you got to know who you're dealing with. And in Ruth, so powerful. Me and my husband were talking about it last night. It only has four chapters, 85 verses, 2,039 words. I thank Bishop Dreyfus Smith for teaching us how to study and go in deeper. And I love when he goes through the word of God like that to teach us how to go deep in the word. And one thing in my passage of scripture, noticing that where Naomi, her husband, her two sons even came to, Moab. I said, Moab, 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 Moab. I've read that before. I, I've, I've studied Moab and I was thinking to myself, wait for it. That's, that's Lot's descendants. Those are Lot's descendants. And as a matter of fact, his own nasty tail slept with his own daughter and made major descendants and that's how the Moabites even came into existence this was a whole lineage of incest demonic work idol god worshiping people and this is where we lead Bethlehem Judah to come it ain't like they didn't know the history Everybody knew about the Moabites and the Moabites were the enemy of the Israelites. So this is where we're going to land because we hungry. Be careful. Be careful where you land up. 
because you're too hungry or you're too thirsty. You got to be careful. You got to make quality decisions and you can't make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Somebody say, I got to be focused in this season or I might die as a result of it. And, 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 and when I was oh, when I was studying, I was like, oh my God, that, that's, that's the same mom. Uh. And this is where we land up. But let me tell you to shout. Let me tell you, because this is so mind blowing, even though, even though the situation was so hard, it was so heinous. Key, hey, my two. It was so disgusting. The Moabites did every and anything. They were just ratchet. And because a famine in the land led us from a famine to a whole unnecessary fight. But it was, in all actuality, necessary. And let me tell you why. I'm telling you, this thing blew my mind. That's why it's called a mind-blowing season. Even though you had to leave your home and come to a place that don't even look like you. It don't smell like you. They don't serve the same God you do. But listen, they weren't even supposed to be there 10 years. Weren't supposed to be there for 10 years. And, 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 I, and I want you to notice something. Did you notice that where it said Orpah and Ruth were married to these brothers? They had no children. Now, I can understand one being barren. But the significance in this story of you being in a situation to where not being equally yoked. This was the ultimate story of Y'all put yourself together, but it's still going to have relevance because had they not, there would be no future of Ruth. After Orpah left, God is my witness. I looked, I tried, she ain't in there. She is never spoken of again. What am I trying to tell you? Once you disconnect from some situations and some people quit giving them your time, your energy, leave them alone. Don't keep bringing them up. This is having you in quicksand. I want you to see the relevance in why they never even focused on anything else. It said when they arrived in Bethlehem, it's the next verse. The whole town was talking. We're in Ruth 4. We're in Ruth 1. We're in Ruth. The whole town was talking because Naomi, hey, big brother, I love you. Hey, everybody else. Look, look, y'all know I had my glasses on. I can see this, but I can't see that. I love y'all. The whole town was soon buzzing. And they said, is this really our Naomi? Naomi had then been gone for 10 years. Naomi left with a whole family. And you come back to Bethlehem, Judah. They know she didn't have a daughter. They know the townspeople said you had a husband, Elamek, Malon, and Chilion. But you come back with a daughter. How is this even possible? And they said, is this really our Naomi at the oldest time? But then she said in verse 20, don't call me Naomi. Don't call me Naomi. That is no longer my name. Her name meant pleasant, loving, good to be around. And she knew what her name meant. She said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just, just don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which Mara interprets to be bitter. The strong one, talking about God, has dealt me a bitter blow. I left here full of life. And God has brought me back with nothing but the clothes on my back. This is what Naomi was telling the townspeople. Why would you call me Naomi? God don't see me that way. This is what she says in the word. The strong one ruined me. Let me put a pause right there. God ain't ruined you. God redirected you. He allowed it because he needed you to do something different. Oh, 
<laughs> Naomi was having a whole fit at this moment. She said he ruined me. Change my name. My name ain't no, and don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. And people that really love you, when they know you're going through something, they'll hear you, but they don't have to accept what you're putting out. They know you're in pain. They're like, let her, let her, she'll be all right. He'll be all right. This is a moment. This is a moment. Give her a moment. Give him a moment. She told them, don't, don't ever call me that again, because that's not how God sees me. And so now she's back and Ruth, the foreigner, because she was. Ruth was a Moabite and they treated her as such. The foreigner with her back from the country of Moab, they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest, was barley harvest. That is the beginning of when everybody gets excited because all this wheat, all this barley that they'll be able to have in their storage. They were bountiful in this and they came right in time the series of events could not have happened at i don't want to say the best time because death is never the best time but look how god works look how strategic he is he's like it happened but i I'm going to redirect you where you first came from anyway. Sometimes going back home ain't a bad thing. Oh, listen, sometimes going back home ain't a bad thing. And then it says, it so happened that Naomi had a relative by marriage. We in, we in chapter two. A man prominent and rich connected with Elamech's family. This was her husband, her deceased. This was Naomi's deceased husband's family. His name was Boaz. Y'all know who Boaz is, don't you? Well, let me catch you up if you don't. He's the baby boy of Salmon and Rahab. Y'all don't know when to shout. If you know about the story of Rahab, you know that she had a whole shaky past within itself. She was the town whore. Until the town collapsed. Until when they shouted around the wall, everything fell but her house. And this is Boaz's mama. One day, Ruth, the Moabite foreigner, said to Naomi, I'm going to work. I'm going out to glean. I've got to work for us. We can't be here hungry. We, we can't be homeless since we in your hometown. Let me go to work. You too old to work. I got you. I'm going to be the breadwinner of the family. She says, let me go out to glean among the sheaves, following after some harvester who will treat me kindly. That means that I don't have, Ruth did not have the ability to glean on her own. But she was hoping that somebody would be kind to her to at least give me scraps. Good God is on. Y'all, she knew she was humble enough to know that I got to start over. But when I start over, I'm not going to be arrogant. When I start over and I go into this field to glean, I'm not going to act like I'm better than anybody else. I know my place. I know that I'm a foreigner. I know that I'm not from here. This is y'all land. I'm just trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. I'm just trying to survive. Me and my mother-in-law, I'm just, tr uh, listen, I'm trying to take care of our family. That was the only family that Ruth had left. Because you do remember, she said, I ain't going nowhere. Where you go, I go. Your people will, be, will become my people. Your God will be my God. Till death do us part, literally. She was giving her vows. Her word was her bond. Deborah, what's up, boo? When your word is your bond, that's the only solid thing that you have with some people. If I tell you I'm going to be here through hell, high water, through sickness and health, if they drag you, I'll never jump on board with somebody else. I'm going to be there for you. Do you have anybody in your life that you can honestly say, I know I do. I know I do. When I tell you I love my family, like I, 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 it's in the pit of my soul how much I love the ones I got left. 
I love the ones who left. I still love them. But you ain't going to kill me. Go right on back to Moab, where you came from. Because I'm moving forward. I'm forward moving. Ruth said, listen, I'm just trying to glean from the first gleaners and get their scraps. Naomi said, go ahead, baby. Go ahead, daughter. Go do you. If that's what you need to do. Listen, we got to eat. And so Ruth set out and she went and she started gleaning in a field, following in the wake of the harvesters. Put a pause right there. I can't get it first. <laughs> but you better believe that I'm going to get it last. I'm going to get me something. But how many of you know the Bible says the first will be last? <laughs> and the last shall be first. She's like, I'm going to be in the back of the line. But if you mess around and tell them to forward march, now I'm in the front of the line. She said, I know what I got to do. I'm humble enough to work even in somebody else's stuff. Getting their scraps until I can get my own. What really messes my mind up is people who are arrogant with nothing. I'm still trying to figure that out. You got a crust above a crumb, y'all. Y'all, listen, to hear my, my sister Oma say that, a crust above a crumb. You will be in tears laughing. They don't have nothing and mean and arrogant and hateful and catty and gossip. Uh, what? You need to be trying to get your whole life together with your little broke self. But this is how people do, but not Ruth. She started gleaning in the field behind the harvesters. And it said eventually she ended up in the part of the field. Wait for it. I told y'all this mind blowing season. Y'all see God working? Y'all see him strategically putting stuff together? Oh, verse one, famine, death, uncertainty of what's going to happen. And God starts orchestrating how he's about to bless her whole life and everybody that comes after it. And how he's using this widow to be the mother of many, many nations to come. She got in the right field. Oh, God, Jesus. It said she ended up in a part of the field owned by Boaz. Her father-in-law's relative. Then the Bible says a little later, Boaz came out from Bethlehem, greeting everyone, including her. He was greeting all the harvesters. And he said, God be with you. And they replied, the harvesters replied, the people who were trying to get the barley, get as much as they could. They replied, and God bless you, sir. God bless you. And Boaz asked his young servant. He ain't never seen Ruth before. He's like, hey, 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 who is that? Who is that? <laughs> he asked his young foreman who were over the farmlands, who were working, who is she? Where does she come from? I, I, I need to know her name. And so the young foreman said, oh, yeah, that's a Moabite girl. Now, you could have just said that that is somebody new. Now, you want to make sure you tell where I came from, which is a sketchy past from Moab. And y'all know that I'm in a foreign land. You better be careful who speaks on your behalf. Y'all, this story had so much meat. And I just said, Lord, where you want me to start? Because it's so good. Everything is so good in this sermon, a mind-blowing season. Even when you get to where you need to be, you still going to have people throwing darts at you. Don't you think for one minute in your come-up season, you still going to have people that will bring up your past, try to bring you down. He said, oh, that's the Moabite girl. The one who came with Naomi from the country of Moab. You already said I'm a Moabite. Duh. He knew I was from Moab. So you're going to keep repeating it. She asked permission. That's what the foreman told Boaz. She asked permission. Yeah, we gave her. We let her glean and gather among the sheaves following after your harvesters. We wanted to make sure that she didn't get the first batch. She just got the scraps 
from the original harvesters. She's been at it steady ever since from morning until now without so much as a break. See, she was a hard worker. She was humble. She knew humility. She had the she had all the fruits of the spirit. So she wasn't there trying to be seen. She just knew I got to work. And prayerfully, I can get behind some people who won't treat me bad because I'm a foreigner. They know I'm not from here and I need help because let me tell you something. Let me put a pause right here. When you're in your season of being in need, you got to watch the people who are around you because people who know you hungry will give you poison. You got to be careful. What are you eating? I know I'm hungry, but you better be careful. They said she's been at it all day. She hasn't even taken a break. Now, she worked hard. She ain't from here. She from Moab, but at least she worked hard. Then Boaz went out to speak to her. Y'all don't hear me. Woo! Knew she was fine. He specifically asked about her. I'd never seen her before, and she fine. He said, listen. The Bible says in the message Bible, he says, listen, listen, my daughter, from now on, don't go to any other field to glean. <laughs> God's strategy is so much better than our own. From here to there, from famine to feast, from poverty to being completely in a privileged situation to where I'll never be broke or broken another day in my life. This is where your life begins if you want it to be. Are you going to stand in quicksand and I just wish I wouldn't have lost that. They just did me wrong and they left me and, and I don't have nothing else. Let me tell you something, y'all. Y'all, I will tell you slightly what I got out of a movie, but I will not tell you the movie because it was so horrible. It was disgusting. And I didn't want to watch it. But I had to watch it for one line. I had to go all the way through every season so I could see how this person's pain literally destroyed them. They had normal people. They had normal relationships. But one moment, one attack, one situation made them be more in love with their pain and their trauma than healthy relationships. At the end of this series, he said, I found out what my problem was. I was more in love with my trauma than the healthy relationships that I knew I had. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all, I almost lost my mind. Never will I ever worship pain. Make pain my altar. Pastor Natika, hey baby, I will never make it my altar again. It happened. I can't bring back who God has taken his property. I can't do it. I can't do it. I worshiped my mother and my father's death Way too long. It could have destroyed me. It could have destroyed the relationships I had left. My bishop preached a sermon Sunday. It said, God gave me enough to live on. He left me enough to win. And God has left you enough to where if you don't move, you're going to stay stuck. And being stuck is deadly. Somebody say, I got to move. This is my mind blowing season. And I will not keep rehearsing if I got molested at 12. If I got attacked, somebody beat me up at 20. If I got divorced at 35. If I lost somebody at 50. That was a moment in time. I cannot worship the loss of my family members. Last year was so messed up for me. I, 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 I was out of my mind. I'll be the first one to tell you that. I, I was sleep deprived. I could have died. 
Is that what I wanted? Is that what I wanted from my family? And they would have had a double funeral, but the devil is a liar. I shall live. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We got work to do and we cannot stay in pain because it is not going to make any type of results. They died and you're going to die. You still got family members left who love you. Whatever you got left, whoever you have left, thank God for him. I was telling my son yesterday, I said, baby, we got more for us than against us. I had the best dream about my brother David the night before last to the point where it could not have just been a dream. We were there. I smelled his fragrance. I, 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 was, I, I, I knew what he felt like. We were walking on a beach, me and my family, and we were there. And, 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 and my, my children and my husband went to another part. They went to a, go to a restaurant and they let me spend some quality time with my brother David. But I knew knew. I knew that was my brother saying, listen, I know you've been thinking about me. So here I am. And I was telling everybody that I met y'all. I know my brother died. I don't know how he's here, but he is a walking miracle. And everybody was so excited that I was talking about what had happened. I was giving his testimony and my brother was just smiling with his big old smile. And he had this laugh that was just so infectious. And I said, God, I thank you. I thank you for even a vision. I can't have him back, but I can't stay stuck. I can't stay in the pain. I would have literally, I thought I, I thought it was over. But God spoke to me and said, I'm still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm still good. Even on a bad day, I'm still a good God. And I need for you to get up, daughter. And Naomi in this story said, listen, I've been in this foreign land for 10 years. I've lost my husband. I lost my two sons. I got to move. I got to move. But the best gift he could have given me was a daughter. Ruth was her blessing. Ruth was going to be the one who opened up the floodgates of blessings. Chapter one, death, hurt, famine. Chapter two in Ruth, God starts turning it around. He's turning it around because now at this point, she's met Boaz and Boaz met her. And he says, from now on, this is the field you'll glean from. Stay and do as much as you need. It, get as much as you need. Somebody say, get whatever you want. Get as much as you need. Get as much as you need. Stay right here in this one. Stay close to my young women. Watch where they're harvesting and follow them. Don't worry about a thing. I've given orders to my servants not to harass you. Ain't no man going to bother you. This is Boaz telling, telling uh, Ruth, you ain't got to worry about a thing. I got you. I'll protect you. I'll look out for you. I got you. Don't worry about a thing. They ain't going to bother you. When you get thirsty, go drink from the water buckets. <laughs> you go drink that the servants have filled. She dropped to her knees in gratitude, y'all. She bowed her face to the ground. How did this happen? That you should pick me out over everybody else. Treat me kindly. Me a foreigner. Because this is a mind-blowing season. And God will pick you from everybody else. Because he sees your character. He knows who you are. He knows that you're going to work hard. He knows that you're not going to give up. He knows to your core, you a good person. When other people just have all the, the sizzle, but no substance, baby, you got the sizzle and the substance. And Boaz noticed that. He was like, hey, 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 hey. I don't know why you here, how you got here, but I got you. God is strategic about how he places you even after the worst times of your lives, period. It was a reason why she didn't have no children with her husband, her first husband. It was a reason. Ten years. Some may have said she was barren. <laughs> I beg to differ. God just held it. He may have just completely 
you know, just said, listen, you won't, you won't have nothing from him. Cause that's not what I want. That's not who I am. We're not going to do it. No, sir. No, ma'am. It, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because this is who I need for you to be with. She says, you have treated me so kindly. I'm a foreigner. And Boaz said, I've heard all about you. Woo! Your name is in rooms and you haven't even entered the room yet. God is having a whole conversation with you with people who need what you have. He said, I heard all about you. I heard about it. He said, I heard about the way you treated your mother-in-law after the death of her husband and how you left your father and mother in the land of your birth and you've come to live among a bunch of complete strangers. He said, your reputation precedes you. You a good person. Everybody's know. And listen, ain't not one bad person can say anything about Ruth. He said, I've been studying you. I've, I've, I've heard about you. I, 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 I've, I've, I've conducted an investigation about who you are. And he said, when I found out how well you treated your mother, your mother-in-law, she's like my mother-in-law. I, I don't call her my mother-in-law. I just say mama. Sylvia Moore has been my Naomi. For real, for real. That's, the, that's my heart. For real, for real. For the past 36 years of my life, She's been in my life. He said, uh, after the death of your husband, you left your own mama, your own daddy, your own country to come follow her and make sure she was good. Woo! Y'all, I, 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 I almost lost my mind. I know we close on time, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go straight to the punchline. But we're coming back to this because it was so much meat. Four chapters in Ruth. Four chapters with so many different lessons that I've missed. God said it was time now. It was time now because you had to tell somebody who over grieved to get their whole self together. And for what I still have left for you. First of all, it was my property. I took it back. And you can't be mad because you belong to me too. You not even your own. You belong to me. Okay, God. I hear you. And Naomi had that conversation. She's like, all right, well, time for me to go home. I feel that something is there. And then Boaz, strategic, her gleaning in his field. He's like, I know who you are. I know who you are. You, you came to this land of strangers and foreigners. Not knowing if you were going to be treated bad or good. And he said, God reward you well for what you've done. God bless you for taking care of her when you didn't have to. You stuck with your mother-in-law, even though your husband passed and there's no correlation. You made her your mother. Y'all don't know when to shout. He said, may God reward you well. And with a generous bonus besides from God to whom you've come seeking protection under his wings. So in other words, I got you. She says, oh, sir, talking to Boaz. She says, sir, such grace, such kindness. I don't deserve it. You touched my heart. You treated me like one of your own and I don't even belong here. Her humility. Don't you know that when you're humble, God will open the floodgates for you. When you are just appreciative, when you're grateful, God will just be, all right, you ready? You don't feel entitled. You ain't a person that give me, give me, give me, give me. I can't, y'all, if it's nothing that I detest more, is being a uh, 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 this give me give me give me give me give me somebody that feels like I should give you something, and here we are in the book of Ruth, and it shows her her her, her genuine her genuine her 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 generosity her her uh, 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 her humility for this man showing kindness, and she wasn't faking it. This came straight out of her heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. She meant that. And he knew that. Boaz said at lunch break, come over here. 
Come over here to my table. Eat with me. Eat some bread. Dip it in the wine. She joined the harvesters and Boaz passed the roasted grain to her. You don't get to eat what I eat. You don't get the scraps. No, 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 no. You don't get the crumbs. I give you the whole cake. I got you. I don't want you to even think that you deserve crumbs. No, no. Let me get you out of that mentality that you deserve just enough. We have more than enough. We serve a God that is more than enough. <laughs> she ate her fill. She ate till she was full, y'all. And even had some left over. It says she got up to go back to work and Boaz ordered his servants. Let her glean where there's still plenty of grain on the ground. She has the pick of where she wants to work. Huh? Oh, y'all don't be, listen. Let her pick. Let her go. Let her glean wherever she want to go. I get full permission. It's mine anyway. Say something. <laughs> Boaz was like, no, 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 no. Let her glean where it's still plenty of grain on the ground. Make it easy for her. Better yet. Better yet, I love how the message Bible reads. It says, better yet, pull some of the good stuff out and leave it for her to glean. Give her special treatment. Y'all, I need to run. I need to run. Give her special treatment. We are arriving in a season where people going to say, I don't normally do this, but. <laughs> Woo! For your, for your pain, for every cry you've had to, for every tear you've had to cry, for every unjustifiable broke day, for people you've helped and they didn't only hinder you afterwards, but they had their mitigated gall to talk about you. Oh my God, Kita, listen, for every blessing, baby girl, that you have given to people, and nobody knows it. Nobody knows how well my best friend treats me. Nobody knows how well she treats people around her. Nobody knows how she took care of her mother until her passing. Because you ain't even got to tell nobody. You, I ain't got to give you my resume on what I do. My life speaks for itself. Good God design. Y'all don't even understand. When people genuinely, from the bottom of their heart, the rewards are amazing, they, uncommon, unfathomable. You can't even explain to people. I don't know. I don't know why I'm so blessed. I don't deserve none of this. I, I feel like that in my life. I'm like, from where I started, I'm not telling you I grew up in the, in, in, in the, in the skid row and, and I was just that down and out. But from there to here, it makes no logical sense. Not for me. Me? Marlo? Jeanette? Donahue Moore? Listen, ain't no Donahue on that. I dropped it. But I just need for y'all to know, from, from, from the origination of how it could have turned out, listen, it wasn't supposed to happen like this for me. Me gleaning, you gleaning in a field that belongs to, at the time, a billionaire. Boaz had everything. And now it says, treat her with special treatment. She gleaned in the field until the evening. And when she had enough, she ended up, listen, when I tell y'all you about to get more than enough, you about to just run over your cup. It's going to run over to your saucer. You're going to pour out your saucer and it's going to be ever flowing. Somebody say, I'm, 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 I'm in this mind blowing season because I cannot believe that God is about to bless me abundantly after I just went through the worst storm of my life. <laughs> she went back with nearly a full sack of barley. That's what the Bible says. After she got done, she gathered up her stuff. She gathered up all of her gleanings. She went back to town and she showed Naomi the results of her day's work. And she gave her her leftovers from lunch. I have more than enough. I got full at lunch. But I wanted to make sure that what I ate, you eat. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. This selfish spirit 
that is launched in the atmosphere, me and mine, I'm getting mine, I'm getting my bag, and I don't care. But when you have a spirit to where you know, I'm not just getting for me, I'm getting for us. I'm building something bigger than I could ever imagine. I'm not just doing this for me because the significance in this word is so powerful from where she started to where she ended. Long story short, because I got to go and I got to go to work today. I got to go to work today. But yes, it's going to be a part two. Yes, I got to get to it. Yes, we're going to jump back in. But I will not tell you the bad and not tell you the good. Long story short. Long story short. She told Naomi, her mother-in-law at this time, everything she got. I met him. Oh, he was good to me. He allowed me to glean in this field. He showed me special treatment. And Naomi said, who, who, whose field did you glean in? And she said, some man named Boaz. Oh, girl, he was so good to me. Oh, he just let me da, 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 da. Naomi like, Whoa, you ain't gonna believe this. She said, God bless God, first of all, she said, God bless whoever blessed you today. And that's when Ruth began to tell her about this man named Boaz. I gleaned in this field and he showed me special treatment and he let me have the pick of everything. Then he let me eat at his table, mama. And then, oh, she just excited. She just going in. And no, Naomi said, uh, well, God bless that man. You ain't gonna believe this. God bless him. God has not left us after all. He still loves us in bad times as well as good. And, and Naomi said, that man, Ruth, is one of the circle of covenant redeemers, a close relative of ours. I went to reap. I went to glean and I found a redeemer. Woo, y'all don't understand. Jackpot. Come on, big sis. This one right here. This is the sure thing. This is why you hurt so bad. This is why they dropped you. This is why the rejection was necessary. This is why you had to get out of that land because God had to bring you to this. Somebody say, I'm in a mind blowing season. There is no way that me, I can get back on top. There's no way that everything that I've gone through, God is about to give me a redeemer. He's about to make sure that everything that tried to kill me and hinder me, it was thrown at me, at my self-esteem, to make me feel bad about myself, to make me focus on the past and not the present, for making me stay stuck. Come on, Pastor Ellis, in, in a season. Come on, Regina. I, I, Yolanda, I, 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 I'm, I'm like, God. When I tell you nobody but a God can turn that thing around, now, Naomi said, that's one of our cousins. You going to get yourself together and you, you, you going to marry him. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, oh baby. Jackpot. That's the one we want. That's the one we want. You, you, you you'll be safe with him. He'll, he'll look after you. He'll protect you. You'll be safe with him. No danger. Nobody's going to try to rape you. Nobody's going to be, be able to, take, you know, try to take advantage of you. I want you to understand the significance and why he said where she's going to have special treatment. As a matter of fact, I want you watching over, over her. I want you watching out for her because especially a foreigner that comes knowing they got to eat. The men would normally take advantage of these young women because they just didn't know any better. Y'all, I got to get to the good part next week. Will y'all join me next week? Because I'm, I'm, I'm still going to go through this. It's four chapters packed with meat. We're going to put a pause right there and we're coming back for part two next week. God is my witness. If I'm in the land of the living, I'm going to give you the rest of this word in our mind blowing season, but I don't want to miss nothing. I want to rush through it. I want to jump back into that because of the significance that is with this story of going from here to there, going from a famine to a feast, going from poverty to being privileged and people giving you all this special treatment. You deserve it. And if you're at a point where you're being half liked, half loved, people barely dealing with you, you're being tolerated. Baby, exit stage left, stage right. You, you're not where you need to be.
because what God brings you will love you. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. When they love you, it, it ain't hard for them to love you and take care of you. It's not a burden for them to bless you. God, I got to go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you this morning. God, I thank you for the word that you have put in the pit of my belly. God, I thank you for this story, this mind-blowing season. God, I thank you for giving us this word, showing us how we can go from a famine to a feast. God, I tell you, thank you, oh God, because we don't have to stay oppressed. We don't have to stay depressed. We don't have to stay in the pit, oh God, when the palace is waiting on us. God, we don't have to stay emotionally bound. We don't have to be in a situation of somebody who hurt us and we live in it. God, that was a place of visitation, not a place of habitation. God, thank you for the bruise, not being a tattoo. God, thank you, oh God, that you kept us for another day to give you glory. God, we give you glory. We tell you, thank you, God. We tell you, thank you for the families represented today, God. God, show your glory. God, give them the signs, okay? Uh, oh God, the, the signs, the miracles, and the wonders, oh God. You're still performing in 2024. God, we tell you, thank you, oh God. God, thank you for being our redeemer. God, thank you for sending your angels on earth, oh God, to carry out your plan. God, we don't understand it, oh God. We don't understand how we got here, the series of events. But God, thank you from taking us to bad to better. God, thank you for bringing us in our wealthy place. God, thank you, oh God, that though the enemy tried it, you settled it, you handled it. You pulled us up out the muck of Maori clay. God, you brought us here today. And God, we tell you, thank you. God, we love you. We, we, we adore you, God. You're so amazing. You're so good to us. God, we will forever, ever, ever, ever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you haven't already, in your spare time, can you share this? Can you tell somebody we're about to walk into a mind-blowing season? Tell somebody that, that, that I may not have understood what happened, the series of events, the pain that I've had to deal with. But God blessed us in spite of us. He didn't allow us to continue to lay down and wallow in the pain. Somebody say, God, thank you for getting me up. God, thank you for allowing me to see another day. God, thank you for letting me breathe air today. God, somebody wanted to breathe this air, but, but, but life wouldn't let them. I want you to make sure that you, that you give God more glory than you complain. I want you to focus on everybody that loves you. Everybody that's left versus people who you think want you dead. Yeah, they want it, but they can't have it. Yeah, they want to take you off the face of the earth, but you still here. And while you're still here with your pretty self, with your handsome self, go smile at the devil. Say, I love you. I know you don't even like me, but I love you. Woo! I find no more pleasure. I find no more pleasure than, 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 than making sure that even though somebody would hate me, that I don't hate them back. That's a superpower. That's something that I prayed for. Because back in the day, I would have cut you and kept walking. You would have been bleeding. You wouldn't even know it. But God, and I thank God for change. I don't glory in my past, but I know from whence I came. But in this season of your life, somebody saying this season of my life, I'm forward thinking. I can't worry about it because I don't know if you noticed, but nowhere else <clears throat> in the story did they even say, oh, Orpah would have loved this, all this stuff. Oh, yeah. When their season is up, let it be up and never Say their name again. Delete them. Take them off your social media pages. Get rid of them completely. Close the chapter. Because it doesn't work anymore. You looking good. You doing well. And here come the devil. Yeah, he's going to come. Because <clears throat> you looking better than when you were with him. That's the point. Devil. Let's make sure. Next week. Same time. We will be back for part two because I've got to give you this word in part two. Somebody type, I'm in a mind-blowing season. Even when it don't look like it, I'm in a mind-blowing season. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed, okay? Make sure 
that you forward this to somebody, give them the link, put it on your page, put their name in the comments because they don't need to give up where they at. Tell them to keep going. Woo! Victory is at the other end of that pain. Listen, your millions are at the other end of you being broke. Uh-uh, I can't give up now. I've gone too far. I've come too far. I love y'all. I gotta go. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Love y'all.